Hello everybody, this video is a silver video. And what I'm going to do is talk about the Fibonacci and doing it automatically within a spreadsheet. And this is what is set up. I have a Fibonacci top for silver and a bottom. And this is going back to uh, April, uh, month ending April 1997 which connects this bottom and this top. Now this is a close only chart. So the intraday high managed to get up to six and change while the intraday low was a little bit below 350. And it's month ending data. So what I can do is use formulas that when it makes a new high, this level would then be pushed higher and these two Fibonacci levels would adjust accordingly. And what I have done is put in a method where I can copy and paste data onto this column here, which is going to increase its chart. This is the 50 period moving average on the monthly chart. And the move lower right down to Fibonacci. I can uh, add a bunch of different charts in here. We'll notice that, well, silver obviously goes higher, and there is a move higher, and the Fibonacci changed accordingly. The Fibonacci, the high, when we look at the spreadsheet, says it was 795. This is the low, and this is the close. This is for the month ending February 1998. This is interesting how we can see that on a close only basis that we are well away from it, that its first Fibonacci level is pretty much on its mode of coming back to support. And there is a test of this Fibonacci level, which is 624. So these lows in here of 606, 565 are actually going below here. That's why close only can be a little bit deceiving of a chart for what we can do is we can adjust the cells a little bit and bring the spreadsheet to today's level where it is today. We'll paste some more data in towards the spreadsheet and see that overall this chart at this time frame we are now at uh, August ending 1999 and silver has stayed pretty much right in the middle of this range. We'll add a few more key data points it's floating around this 50-day moving average on its two-thirds Fibonacci level from this low and this high and now we're at the point of August 2000 so silver obviously is going to be bottoming soon and its Fibonacci levels are obviously going to change Right now, at this point, people might have been thinking, oh, no, we're below the 50 moving average. We're below five. That it's time to panic and get out of silver, where, if anything, it was the time to get into silver. As this chart, the silver market, was looking like it was on verge of a collapse. And what I have on this spreadsheet is Fibonacci levels at the top, which has the low, the high, and the levels. So what I can do is put in a 23.6 level and get the chart with its Fibonacci down below. And that area has been an area where at that time it was used as resistance. If I add a few more 
data points. You can see it had a little bit of a rally back up to the declining 50 month moving average. And uh, add in another few more months. Finding support at this Fibonacci level. And again, it's finding support. And at this point here, the break is obviously happening soon, given the fact that it's 203. 204 is a very good year for silver. So the breakout obviously does happen. And there is that breakout. So we're going to take that 23.6 down and replace it with a 61.8. So therefore, the Fibonacci level has now changed back. But what's going to happen is when this makes a new high, that's going to alter the Fibonacci and I have a second Fibonacci level when one is needed. There's a, another breakout. A big move that brought it up to what we see on here as 844. But it sold off really, really quickly. Once again, people see it below this Fibonacci level might have panicked a little bit. Of course, not many people, I think, use Fibonacci, especially even back then. But if we even add some more cells and uh, change the scaling just a little bit, maybe go 112 to 195. And we can see that it's in a nice little range. So now what I'm going to do is put in a, another alternate Fibonacci, which will connect the same highs with these lows. How do I do that? Well, I have to find out what this low period is below $6. This is the high, this is the low. So I can scroll above here and see that we have 581, we have uh, what looks to be 544. So what I'm going to do is add a second Fibonacci level. I will put in 544 for this one and the high will be whatever its high happens to be. Right now it's at 844. So I have a second Fibonacci level in here, which connects this low and this high. And surprisingly enough, I don't seem to have the results, but that's an easy fix simply by copying and pasting what I have in here to the lower ends and that will fix the problem. Okay, so now we have our second Fibonacci level which connects this low and this high. So now we can see how two Fibonacci levels have coincided with each other. The two-thirds retracement of the red one and the first one towards the black one. The black and the red meet up together and this low also coincides with the other Fibonacci, the two-thirds from, and a lot of times Fibonacci will do that. They'll just nicely coincide.